Well, this is the first item I'd like to tell you about that I purchased while uh, all of my friends were here and we were running around to antique stores. This is an old radio, of course, as you can tell. And it's an interesting set because um, it's, it tells a story. Now, um, if we just look at it, it's, a, it's in a very handsome cabinet, uh, almost piano shaped, a nice grill. And some, um, some interesting burl veneer up here, which will come up beautifully. The rest of the cabinet is walnut, and then it's ebonized down here, uh, veneer that is. And the, uh, <clears throat> the grill cloth is great under there. There's no chipping in the grill itself. It's a small five-tube radio, considered an American five-tube set. I think it's a five-tube set. And we don't have any chipping or any loss on the cabinet, so we're going to be able to do a good job at that. We'll have to see about the... Now, this is plastic here. The, what would be, uh, the, the, what, what sometimes would be glass. Usually on radios, it's plastic at this point. In the, well, this, well, this set actually dates to 1940 or 41. And I'm probably going to be able... This has yellowed, but I'm hoping that a lot of it is nicotine and I'm actually going to be able to clean that up so that we can see through much better. Now what we notice is there's a wonderful Art Deco uh, indicator there, station indicator, and we see Air Chief. Uh, you say, well, who, who the heck is Air Chief? Well, let's go down here and now we see a familiar trademark in a very familiar font. We can get it to show up. Firestone. Well, now wait a minute. Firestone didn't make radios, they made tires. Well, they made rubber tires starting at around, I think, 1900 or 1901, something like that. And then somewhere in the late 20s, they went on the air with the Firestone Hour. And this was the way they would advertise their tires. They sponsored. Uh, this radio show, the Fire Firestone Hour, and Everetti had an hour, and Frigidaire had an hour, and all the big companies had uh, sponsored radio shows. So uh, Firestone, the, the rubber company, tire company, had radios made to sell in their tire showrooms. Yeah, you know, in those days, you would go to a Firestone dealer to get your tires. Well, you could also buy a radio to complement the Firestone uh, radio show. A Firestone didn't have anything to do with the electronics or the cabinetry. The, the radio, th this one, was made by Stuart Warner. Some of you will recognize that company name. They actually built the electronics. They made the chassis and built the radio itself. The cabinet here, the wood cabinet was made by, I want to say the, uh, either the Ingram, now I might have that wrong. <laughs> so bear with me. It, it, one of the clock companies that were still making uh, clocks in those days, I think it might, might have been Ingram, Ingram clocks, but anyway, Stuart, uh, Firestone didn't make anything. They put their name on there and they put a Stuart Warner radio and an Ingram clock company cabinet and they could sell these radios. There was a lot of money to be made in those days in radio and it's 1940. Now it's in beautiful condition. One of the things you always want to look for is two original knobs when you can find them. These would be difficult. This is an unusual bullet shaped Art Deco knob. Those would be tough to replace we have good grill cloth. That doesn't have to, have to be replaced. We'll clean this up as best we can. We don't have any missing veneer. The cabinet work is easy. Now when I turn this bad boy around, uh, I can tell that at some point in its history, this may be a re, re, uh, uh, 
this could be a new cord. We're going to cut it off because obviously we're not going to plug this thing in. I wouldn't plug it in anyway. But I'm always excited when I see an original back on a radio. Well, most of the time, quite often, these are missing, which doesn't really hurt the value a lot. But with this in place, I feel pretty certain some annoying teenager hasn't gotten in here in the 1950s or 60s and pulled out the vacuum tubes and fiddled with it. So we probably have a radio that needs to be, well they always need to be restored, but the innards are probably good. I see no indication of water damage, so I don't think we're going to find anything more than just some light surface corrosion on the inside, not really rust. And it's a set that, uh, certainly not rare, but not one that you see as often as uh, some of the other brand names. Okay, so there's a five minute explanation on this little guy. What did I pay? He was $32 and then he was 20% off. So, figure that out. Something in the high 20s. Uh, I paid for this and was happy to do so and event that'll go on the shelf for now and eventually get cleaned up and we'll have it singing again just like it did in 1941 mm hmm just in time to hear uh, all about the date that will live in infamy more than likely I love that okay just a footnote and then we won't get any more technical than that with the radio upside down we can see here the Firestone Tire and Rubber Company, and then we see Super Heterodyne. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. It's actually a six tube set. Only AM, we don't have any FM yet, not in 1941. That's going to come after the war. <clears throat> now, I've taken the back off. I want to show you something else. Because I said this that, I, that this chassis is a Stuart Warner. <clears throat> chassis we get in here and we'll see now this is the back off this is antenna here and boy I love seeing all that old dust nobody has been inside of this radio and look even the tube there says Firestone Chief they've got their name on their tubes but look here Radio Corporation of America aha that's RCA you didn't say this was an RCA radio. No, no, no. But at this time, still, uh, the Super Heterodyne circuitry is owned by RCA. And you have to buy the uh, a license to circuit to, to, build, to produce radios with that particular circuitry, which was superior to any other. And if we really zoom in, we'll see licensed under patents of RCA. And it was Edwin, Edwin Armstrong, and RCA owns these patents, the Super Hep pat patents. And if you didn't have it, you had to, you had to uh, pay RCA uh, a, a fee to license that circuitry. So that's what we've got here. All right, I'm going to get the chassis screws off the bottom and get this chassis out of here. But I love this old dust. And... Uh, that tells me that we have a, a radio inside that has not been messed with until me. <laughs> but I'm going to mess with it in a good way. Okay, you don't want to see any more of this. Let's go do something else. Well, you knew better. You knew I was coming back. All right, we've got the chassis out of the box. And that's the inside there. Perfect. The box is going to come up beautifully. And what's even more exciting to me is... Um, we're all here. Now I did snip off the line cord, which is peanut brittle. Look at the inside of that set. That is a thing of beauty. Now I know why someone was in here. These are the original Firestone 1941 tubes there. You see there, Fire Chief? And at some point, somebody got in here and they put in probably a new detector. These these tubes were put in these uh, after market. In other words, it's you know a tube went bad and they put these in there. Everything else is good. So I, there's no rust. 
We'll clean all this up. The uh, Let's turn it around this way. Beautiful. Look at that wonderful deco. Now you could hardly see that through that uh, bezel through uh, uh, through the uh, dial plastic we could hardly see it look at that mmm speaker looks good there might be a tiny little pinhole right there we'll dot some uh, rubber cement on that perfect we don't have any mice pee, mouse poop in here, or mouse, mouse poop is fine. Mice pee, we don't like that. The tuning condenser turns beautifully. The old string on the dial is not dry rotted. We're fine there. All right, let's turn it on. Let's turn it on its side and hold your breath. I don't think anybody has been in here, uh, and if they have, we'll know it. Let's see. Okay, yep, this is what we want. Nobody has been in here. <laughs> Nobody. Now we're gonna have to go in and get out all these paper condenser capacitors. You see these here that have wax on them? These go bad, they, uh, they're gonna leak. Uh, they don't actually leak, they leak electronically is what I'm just say, trying to say. These are coming out, okay? We gotta replace those. And then down here, the dog bones, we'll test them. These are called dog bone capacitors. They might be okay, we'll test them. Now these, uh, uh, these, these disc capacitors, the mica capacitors, uh, they usually don't go bad. The disc capacitors usually don't go bad. It's not that it's unlikely. But these paper capacitors, that's called recapping a radio. They've got to come out. And, and uh, that one should be okay back there. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if the, uh, if the coil is good. We should, well, this, this shouldn't be a difficult, it's clean inside and it looks like this won't be too bad. A couple of hours and we'll have Bing Crosby. Well, I wish we could have Bing Crosby in a couple of hours, but we'll have something. It's the station indicator light right there, and then we'll go from that. All right, for now, I'm going to put it all back together again, put it on the shelf. This is something to work on now. This is something to work on in January when I'm under two feet of snow. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for letting me ramble on about this old radio. That's it. Who knows what that is? Yep, that is about 80 years of uh, your grandfather's uh, Prince Albert tobacco or Aunt Mildred's Lucky Strikes <laughs> or just plain wax and dirt because if you were a good housekeeper in those days, you applied a, applied a generous coat of Johnson's Paste Wax on all of your... Um, radio cabinets the radio and, and furniture in your home all right so about a half an hour with a very gentle degreaser and just paper towels no steel wool nothing abrasive that gets off years and years of uh, nicotine and wax look at how much the burl walnut is coming up already you see that now I'm gonna gently touch up where the ebony paint has come off just a little bit especially down there on the bottom we can really see it now and um, I cleaned this as much as I could it has darkened with age we're not going to be able to get it any lighter than that I'm gonna live with it for now we'll see what it looks like when I get the uh, chassis back in we'll see how well we can see the dial but because this is curved I can get a new one made. You know, it's going to cost you a couple of bucks to do that, to have it molded. Um, but we may just live with it. We'll have to see when we get it back into the cabinet. And then on this side, when Uncle Henry painted this side of the house, he didn't put a drop cloth down. Splattered white paint all over it. He didn't get any on the front or this side either. 
I'll get some of this paint off, but honestly, I'm not going to uh, go crazy trying to get it off. My father always got a kick out of little dots of white paint on any antique piece of furniture where somebody painted and didn't put a drop cloth down. There are radio restorers who would strip this thing completely. Boy, they would spray it, gl gloop it all up. They'd get all the old shellac off of it. And uh, that's personal taste. You know me. This radio tells a story. It should look like 1941, not 2000 and what are we in? 21. So I am not a person who, who, who over restores uh, or refinishes. And this cabinet is just too good to, to do that. All right, let's see what else I can do with it. I told you I wasn't going to mess with this anymore. Look at me. Well, you know, listen, when I said I wasn't going to keep messing with it, I should have known better. You probably knew better as well. There she is. Cosmetically, I'm finished with her for now. Let's go in and I'll tell you what I did uh, and what I plan to do later on. I am back in Philadelphia. I've left the workshop. And here's my 1941 Air Chief by Firestone uh, sitting here on the uh, bookshelf. I'll we'll just zoom in and let you have a close-up. Boy, look how much you can see the dial. I'm happy with that, and I'm not going to fiddle with it at all. No, we're going to leave it just like that. I got all that old nicotine off. It took a while. And this, so this is all the original. We're going to leave it just like that. And look at how beautiful this burl walnut came up here. That's the original grill cloth. Okay, and if you look in closely, you'll be able to see some alligator hide. That's what happens to the old finish. I love leaving it that way. Mm hmm Even the little bit on the top that's come off. And then if we go over here to the side, I even left those little paint splatters on there. <laughs> Just a few of them. I guess you can't see it, it's kind of dark. There you can see. I just left them on there. It just kind of tells the story of this radio. So um, after I worked on it for about a half an hour getting all the nicotine off and all the old dirt, I used a degreaser to get off any old grease and wax that might have been applied. And then I buffed it down with a uh, triple aught, four aught, four aught steel wool. I did a nice little scratch cover on it, and then I put on a top coat. I just, uh, with a cloth, a lint-free cloth, I used just from the hardware store, uh, a refinishing product. I won't mention it. I don't know that I'm supposed to mention it, but uh, it has a little bit of a stain in it and, um, and a varnish, and you just sort of buff it on, let it dry, and then you can do... Uh, and then you sort of buff it down a little bit to get some shine off of it. So it has not been stripped. It has not been refinished. I just sort of reconstituted the finish, took care of some scratches, cleaned the knobs, and uh, it's there it is. I love the sound of the on-off. And look at those Art Deco Bakelite bullet knobs. Now, of course, I've done nothing to it electronically. We'll wait for a snowy day in January to get in there and recap it. And, but I think it's a very handsome radio. And as I said earlier, I'm thrilled with the way the Art Deco, the Art Deco uh, dial is here. And completely repairable. I'm very happy with my little... Oh, it was about a $26, $28 purchase once I had the, uh, the, the sale. Okay, I will be back tomorrow, and I'll tell you all about the wonderful weekend I had with David, Tammy, Vinny, and Dee, and I'll tell you more about them, and we've got some video to show, and there'll be some video on their channels as well. Uh, but that's it for today. I'm back in the swing of things. I've got packages to wrap tonight and some listings to do. I've got more autumn glass for you, and lots of fun things coming this week. So thanks for watching. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. And I just said thanks for watching. Wait for the cat. So long for now.